You have never said anything mean about anyone. You wouldn't even name the dude who was telling you to stay in your lane. <laughs> oh, we just went live. That's excellent. <laughs> Talk about practical pistol show, my Oh, you surprised me. <laughs> Here to answer your shooting questions. Joining me today, uh, as usual, producer Candace. Hi. Hi. All right. And Tim Heron's back with us. Hey, what's up, guys? From well, Kansas City or wherever. Kansas City. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Uh, first up today, our discussion topic, Candace. What do we have? Okay, we got uh, Jeff Gonzalez from Modern Service Weapons talking about strength and shooting. Um, and he says, uh, I mean, he starts off strong. He says, you want to get better at shooting? He has two words for you, weight room. Ooh. And he's saying that professional athletes that take his shooting classes beat down all the normal people because they're so strong. Uh, yeah, what about it, Tim Heron? What do you think of that? Uh, I don't think strength has a huge thing to play. I mean, it, you're, you're talking to a guy that just did – what, a thousand push-ups last week, and then a few weeks ago did like a thousand in the same day. Oh, but let's be fair, you're moving a lot less mass than, than most of us when we do push-ups. <laughs> I bet I weigh more than Tim does. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because I'm fat. Oh, uh, whatever. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't man. know. I, I don't see it being... I don't know. I see a lot of guys that are... Didn't you do a class over the weekend shape. with somebody? I did, I did do a class. I did a class. Who'd you do a class with? <laughs> I did a class with Matt Hopkins. All right. Now, I'm not, not to be an asshole, but he's not exactly a bodybuilder. Nope. Not at all. But and he shoots like a fucking boss. God damn right he does. The guy is efficient and, I don't know, he knows what he's doing. I probably say way more than I do even. The guy is awesome. All right. So this the article, I, I think it's... Uh, there's, it's interesting. There's a lot of interesting things about it. The uh, Right up at the top when he says, want to get better at shooting? Great. I have two words for you. Weight room. Like that's like, that is first and foremost is going to work out. And that's that's not just, um, I don't think that's really clickbaity. He said at the bottom, the next time someone asks me what I can do to get better at shooting, I might give them a drill. But in my head, I'm thinking, just get stronger. I mean, that's... That's that's interesting. That's uh, that's a lot different than, I guess, USPSA shooters approach it. I mean, yeah. obviously, this guy's coming at it from a different perspective. It's a hell of a claim. I mean, to say that you're going to get better at shooting just by getting stronger, uh, I have to disagree with that. Well, uh, well, I mean, being more, being more athletic is probably good, right? Yes. I'll tell you that I got a lot well, better yeah. when I got a little bit stronger and started working my grip a little more. Um, but in the end, it's... I don't know. I guess there's a certain minimum level of strength, and if you have that, you're golden, right? I mean... Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, okay, but working your grip more, was that more so from, let's say, a technique standpoint or just strictly muscling the gun around more? Hmm. Well, Gonzalez says that uh, <laughs> you're not, you know, the that basically you need to grip the pistol with your pinky and your ring finger mostly or something and huh? he goes into he says he tries to imagine the student Jeez, uh, Tim, I sent you the other one the pre show. Oh, Have you yeah. memorized it yet? What you... uh, no. <laughs> what? No. Uh well okay, well I'll I'll the other thing that jumped out at me it says in regards to recoil management and assuming a powerful grip, the upper torso and in specific your lats, traps, delts, I don't know what any of those muscles are, but <laughs> Along with your shoulder girdle needs to be retracted as if you're pulling a rope with both hands at the same time. So it sounds like the upper, like the chest region, super tight, and uh, that that doesn't sound like the way I shoot. Uh, what yeah. about you, Tim? No, it doesn't sound like the way I shoot either, uh, and it's <clears throat> definitely not something I kind of preach to anybody that I talk to or that I, you know, I, I teach or instruct. It, it's I want you to be relaxed, you know, so you can actually move and. And kind of roll with things. I mean, the more rigid you are, the harder it is. To, you're trying to muscle the gun or trying, and we all know what where that gets you. Well, if I had to kind of read between the lines a little bit here, for most of the tactical training classes that I've seen, I don't I don't really participate in them. But I've seen them. It's going to be typically like one target downrange. Right. And the reason squared that, up. Yeah. The reason that we stay relaxed is transitioning around fast. 
and uh, moving in and out of position really fluidly. So I believe the static. operators call that dynamic movement, right? Something like that. I don't know. Static movement. Uh, I wouldn't know about right. operating, but yeah. <laughs> know about shooting. Yeah. And well, this just sounds like a different approach to shooting, and to me. Yeah, I'm not going to tell somebody. I think being more fit, being more athletic is value-added. That's a good thing. I can't uh, – I, I wouldn't recommend, like, hey, you want to get better at shooting, man, go get stronger. You know, that yeah, that's not going to be my recommendation. But it, it's good fodder for conversation, definitely. Sure. Huh. All right, let's wrap this up. Uh, Candace, anything else to say on this? Yeah, well, I mean – I just know that when I did start shooting, I wasn't very strong at holding the gun because I'm not a dude and I don't have strong hands. So I did definitely work them with the captains of crush and all that stuff helped a bit, you know. But just I don't know. I just eventually I started off with the whole oh you need to lean into it and you need to be rigid and all that stuff. But no, you hold the gun with your hands and the gun bounces and you kind of just I have found the looser I get, the better my <laughs> recoil control becomes which is kind of weird. I hold the gun firmly, but I don't, like, lock out anything. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, it's... But but at the same time, I mean, his his main... I mean, the first two words, I have two words for your weight room. Did you really have to go to a weight room to use your Captains of Crush to... to <laughs> no, I mean, in fact, I, I stopped doing them. those because they hurt my hands. <laughs> 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 you just need to do a, more. Just girl. do more and get used to it, Candace. <laughs> well, I mean, the the best I could do is the one, and then I was like, eh, that seems good enough. I think I'll just dry fire some more. Oh, man, we got to spice this up. Imagine if Caleb were on the show and he was drunk, what would he say? Uh, there'd probably be a whole bunch of fucks. Probably oh, either given or not given. Probably. The guy had quite a. Well, I'm sorry. This a, is dry. This is real. This is yeah. real material, right? We're talking. Yeah, we're actually talking about shooting now. God damn it! Oh, so, so much less entertaining. All right, let's move this fucking shit show along, Candace. Shooting All right. question. We're going to two questions a show, baby. Let's do it. Oh well, in fairness, only one of them's any good. So oh. that is true. So uh, this guy up. says, thank you for all the great tips and instruction in the book series and videos. Greatly appreciated. This is not meant to replace good fundamentals or dry fire training, but my question is, what guidance can you provide on the best way to approach and shoot a stage in USPSA competition? In a short amount of time, assuming you're the first shooter up, um, how best to approach your plan given the stages will have lots of variables, etc.? So I guess being first is kind of difficult. Well, it can be if you didn't show up for the, the match ahead of time. Uh, oh. <laughs> as I, I like to do that. I like to show up early, uh, let, let you walk around. But if you want to come up with a plan quickly, you just walk through the stage. Don't don't follow the squad around, you know, because they're going to be in their little conga line walking through how they think they want to do it. You just walk around, get a sense for every, where everything is, get a sense for, you know, where you have to go to see all the targets. So you'll say, like, hey, I have to be over there. I have to go over there at some point, and I have to go up there to see, you know, those targets. Then you can make a decision what order you want to go to those positions, you know, what, what saves steps or what's advantageous, what flows really well. And then you look at the, the choices you have. Like, maybe you have, there's an opportunity to shoot while moving. Maybe there's targets you can see from multiple locations, something like that. Decide where you want to shoot stuff from. And there's a lot of considerations. It could be like, hey, if I shoot... You probably run into this a lot, uh, Tim, shooting single stack, but if it's like, hey, if I shoot that target from over there, then it's like advantageous for a mag capacity. So that looks like a good reason to do that. Yep. I've had that I've had that work to my advantage, and I also had it work not to my advantage. You know, you think like, oh, I can save myself a reload by shooting something way over there that I you know, that you find out later, like, well, crap, I could have gotten to that, you know, at a, at a better location and the reload really was a wash, and the time would have been better, yeah, and I would have had it. a better hit on the target. So. God damn it, Tim. All right. I'm derailing <laughs> my train of thought. i got to finish this out. All right. All so right. you figure out like what you can see from where. You make those little decisions, and then you burn in the plan that you have. So it's like figure out what you have to do on the stage. Figure out kind of like what order, in a broad sense, you like the best. You know, like I'm going to go here, then over there, then over there, and then – you know, make the little decisions like, where am I going to shoot this one target I can see from a couple spots? Am I going to shoot while moving there or not? And then you kind of burn in that plan. But for me, the big thing to remember is uh, it 
you have a lot of choices, and most of them aren't going to make much of a difference once the uh, once the stage is you know all done. So making a decision early and then uh, committing that committing your decision to memory, and you know I'd rather on a five minute stage a five minute stage walkthrough before I'm up first. I would probably make all my decisions in the first two minutes and then spend the next three minutes getting really comfortable with that. Absolutely. And then sticking to, no matter what everybody else's plan is, sticking to your plan because that's your best means of execution. Well, you're up first, man. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't let anybody talk me into anything nope. if I'm up first and there's five minutes. Nope. Like, you guys go fuck yourselves. Like, I'm gonna <laughs> come up. With, I'm gonna do what I want to do, and it doesn't really matter what you have to say to me. Well, you know, the thing is that I mean, I actually started showing up like an hour early for just the local matches that are outdoors or whatever. That made a huge difference, to, like immediately, because holy crap, just walking up to the stage and trying to do it. Oh, that was that didn't go well. I'll tell you. <laughs> That that does not go well. Well, the other thing, hey Candice, you were in what? that one. You were in uh, that one, the the small group class where you guys all shot the stage the way you wanted, and then I shot it the, like the stupidest way that made some sort of logical sense. Like I think it was like running backwards and shit. Yeah, this is retarded. And it was like <laughs> one second different from me shooting it the way that I liked. Yeah, your hits were a little worse. Right, so even like it didn't wow. really make. It Thanks didn't make for pointing out the specifics. <laughs> well, I mean, the well, yeah, the hits were a little worse. I didn't really like, sh but I mean, the point is, you could shoot it in yeah, a way that makes logical sense, it's like, and it's not going to make. You got three big positions, difference. and you got to go to all of them. It kind of doesn't really make a huge difference, except for your preference, what order you hit them in. A lot of times, if it's like a triangle or something, it's just. I mean, you got to get the points. Yeah. So. And, what, I mean, once you kind of feel, like, once you know that it doesn't matter that much, the choices you make, then it's a lot easier just to make a choice and, you know, be comfortable with it. That's kind of the point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the All right. Main thing, main thing is execution. That's it. That's... Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All righty. <laughs> okay. Candice, let's hit the next question. All right. The next question... Uh... Is the good one, right? My club is installing new action pits, but due to limitations of being in an urban environment that are not avoidable, we have to divide the ranges with cement walls. This will limit shooting into the berm only, so no shooting into side berms, obviously. I know this limits things, but do you think that the ranges could still be used to start a USPSA program? We also have an indoor range and one large range where we could shoot into side berms. I guess... I mean... I, everybody knows what I'm going to say, but let me just say the other thing. Like, no, fuck it. I don't see the point. Like, why even do it? Like, if you can't shoot into the side berms, then just fuck shooting USB and say. You might as well shoot indoors or something. Like, when I, if, I answer it, if I answer it the opposite way that you know that I'm going to answer it, it sounds really fucked up. Right? <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't understand why this is a question. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was interesting, so I'll throw it in there. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's what a lot are you supposed people. to do is just sell him to kill himself or something. <laughs> there's a lot of people listening to this that are right now like, "Hey, my my club's like that," or like, it's like, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of clubs like that, and uh, you know, whatever. I mean, you could be inventive. I'd come up with stages that are. You can. Have, I've shot really interesting matches that, you know, there's no side berm action going on at all. Yeah, we have a uh, an indoor range that we shoot every Friday night, and we've got a couple of stage designers that really throw in some pretty wicked cool stages for having to shoot everything completely downrange against the backstop. And I don't know, well, we don't have any problems running pretty kick-ass USPSA matches on Fridays. All right, so we're agreed. Fuck it, this this club should just not even not even spend the time. I agree. They should. They should not. <laughs> there you go. Goes it down. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, if you want to t contact Tim Heron, he is now teaching people to shoot matches and be USPSA badasses just like him. Uh, find him on Facebook. That's Tim Heron with an H. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if you want to hit hit up Candace, she's on Twitter at Producer Kermit. And if you want to find me... <laughs> what? I love it. I love yes. it. Yes. <laughs> Head over to BenStegger.com. If you have a shooting question that you'd like the answer to, I'd love to hear from you.